brilliant day in my life. How you talk so much bullshit, and yet you're still so wrong. This is why will no stop. Rihanna is hitting the crack pipe again. E3 is if right you have any kids, gender, they're going to die too. I don't give a fuck. Creatures. They'll grow up what to be feminists anyway. I hope you enjoyed you your last moments alive on this earth. Ben, she you did nothing worthwhile with your life. Following that boy out of bed for terrifying you. Stop it, cunt. I'm sick of what you fucking feminists are trying to establish. I'm going to rape your filthy ass until you bleed. Then choke you to death with your husband's tiny Asian penis. I've got a cape bar and I'm coming to your house so I can shove it under your ugly feminist cunt. Your mutilated corpse will be on the front page of Jezebel tomorrow and there isn't jack shit you can do about it. I wish that whoever rapes you gets a POV video of it. I am going to murder you both and fuck your dead corpses. I get hundreds of messages like that every single day, all day long. My name is Brianna Wu. I'm head of development at Giant Space Cat. I'm a software engineer and an expert in the Unreal Engine. And sometimes when I'm not making games, I have opinions about the way that women are erased, bullied, belittled, and not taken seriously in the video game industry. And for speaking up about this, I've had 106 death threats in the last 10 months. If you don't know what Gamergate is, you know, I really do envy you. Basically, Gamergate is the KKK of the video game industry. It's a hate group. And what you have is there's been a huge explosion in the number of women that are gamers in the last few years. Depending on which stat you look at, women are now between 46 and 52% of the video game industry. And what's happened because of that there's an increasing tension in an industry that used to think video games were just for men, and now we're coming to grips with the fact that women are playing games too. And because of that, the industry is changing. More women are coming on dev teams. It's being questioned if women can perpetually be bimbos, sex objects, and damsels in distress in games. And what you have from that is a violent, angry backlash from a group of men that like games exactly the way that they are. They don't want them to change, and they don't see themselves as harassers for sending me those messages. They see themselves as noble warriors, and they, pretend, they are hell-bent on protecting games at all costs. So I think most normal people can look at video games and tell there's a very serious problem with the way women are depicted. You know, you can go through this. Um, I, the sad thing is, as I was putting these slides together, I could do this for days. You know, these are not side characters. These are some of the most well-known women in video game history. And what's really ironic is even when you have characters in video games that are held up as icons for women, you know, inevitably they end up slowly getting more and more sexualized and made to be characters for men. You know, this is one of my favorite characters, uh, Claire Redfield from Resident Evil 2. You know, she came out and she was this very, very strong female character. And Capcom has you know, treated her in different ways over the years. And what they did in their last game is, you know, Claire is now in her 40s. And her skeletal mesh kind of reflects that. So when this game came out, you had a lot of men that were very angry about having a woman depicted as having age, so they turned her into this in a mod that was actually banned on Steam. So, you know, the truth is anything that respects women in games is held up to tremendous obloquy. It's a very, very frustrating place to be. So this is one of the 106 death threats that I have gotten this year. I'm going to play it for you. I'm going to tell you this is pretty shocking. This is the Skulls Manifesto where I'm going to be teaching you all. Well, not teaching you. I'm going to tell you about how me and my crew will fucking take care of the fucking women and gaming issue that you've all been hearing about on the gamer sites. We're going to deal with this vigilante style, basically. I've pretty much unchained the beast within. I'm going to be go bloodthirsty on these fascists and, like... This is for the manifesto for the Skulls. We are an anarchist men's rights group called the Skulls, and this is our manifesto. 
We are fed up with the cops, bullshit, and the media, and we're gonna take back the games industry from fags. It's our high priest for the death omen on Brianna Wu's life, and we are gonna finish the fight. Uh, that's that's it guys. This is Tice Andrews, the official blade master of the skulls. That's it. Keep it fucking real and you'll see me in the news. Look for the skull mask. I'm gonna do this hitman style. You know, that's just one of 106 specific terrifying death threats I've gotten this year. You know, it's just a daily avalanche, and the truth is it changes you. you. You cannot live in that level of intimidation and fear all year long without coming out of it damaged. So, you know, this is Inspire Fest, and, you know, <laughs> certainly I've given a lot of talks where I've talked about the horrors of Gamergate. Something that I think is really frustrating about the tech industry is people don't seem to be willing to listen to women here until there's a tragedy involved. And you, know, you have women that have talked about for years the problems that they've been facing. You know, I've met some of these engineers this week. And you know, it seems like we didn't really pay attention to the women talking about the problems here until there, were, there was a tragedy. And at that point, you know, the media was really happy to put a camera in my face so I could relive what it's like to suffer like this. But I wanted to give you guys a new talk today because this is Inspire Fest, not Depression Fest. So uh, this, was a, uh, this was a headline in your paper here. This is probably my favorite thing that's ever been written about me. Games boss to take on industry misogyny. I didn't quite like that. Um, so you know, what I want to do is I want to tell you all why I'm still here and why I fight on this issue. So, I'm going to tell you a very quick story that happened on the plane ride here. So, E3 was this week. This is one of the very biggest events in our industry. They bring out all the game news for the year. Every single giant uh, console has a really big event to celebrate the work that they're doing. PC Gamer is probably the most important publication in the PC world. They put together their E3 show. And so as I'm on the plane here on hotel on airplane Wi-Fi, I see that 28 of their speakers, 28 out of 28 speakers they announced are all men, and you know, certainly seem to be all white men. You know, this isn't a really great um, you know, thing in diversity. You know, this happens all the time. And you know, so what I did and what other women in the industry did is we decided to rain a little feminist hellfire on them in Twitter. So you know, I talked to the editor of PC, um, of PC Magazine, and it went about as well as you could expect. You know, what perpetually happens when you, you call someone on this, they kind of declare their noble intent. You know, in this case, they swear up and down that they're going to have other women speakers. And they did, they brought out one woman speaker and the CEO that was a co-sponsor to talk in the middle of the show. But you know, they don't respond to it, they kind of ignore it, and you know, it's just very, very frustrating. And what happens for me is I end up spending, because I spoke out on this, I end up getting tons of death, not death threats over this, but I end up getting a ton of harassment online, like Twitter, email, it's just a ton of static that I end up getting. So, you know, <laughs> when it comes to women speakers, you know, it seems like there's this formula that we run into over and over and over. So what happens is you have a panel in the tech industry that is announced, you know, and then women kind of note that there aren't any women speakers included. So they get called on it. And then, you know, the, the conference organizers come forward and they go, no, 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 listen, this isn't the final program, guys. This isn't, you're, you're being unfair. We're going to have a, a woman on stage. So then, even though women are 50% of the population, they'll hastily add a woman or two. And then no one learns anything. We're doing it again in a few months. So, you know, what I guess I want to stress here is, for me, there's very, very little upside to calling out PC Magazine on this. You know, my company is going to have a PC game released later this year. 
And, you know, all this does is burn my bridges. And it gets me in a lot of trouble. You know, um, I'd imagine that editor doesn't, doesn't like me anymore for speaking out. Yeah, I could stand up here and I could tell you that I did this for women in tech. And it would be true. But the truth is, I really did it for me. Even though I'm very frustrated with the way women are treated and erased and not treated as equals in this field, the real truth of the matter is this is about living with myself. I'm unwilling to have a career while I stay silent, while one of the biggest magazines in our industry chooses, chooses to have no women on stage. Game Informer is another really powerful organization in our industry. They have 18 editors at that publication. 17 of them are male. And again, I could stay silent and not say anything, but I have to call them out because I cannot live with myself if I don't do them. So, you know, there's a funny thing about our brain. You know, we like to think that we are rational creatures, that we think through every single situation in a completely Spock-like way. But the truth is our brains are not, you know, scientists. Our brains are lawyers. And there's this really interesting trick with the way that we we'd come to conclusions. So we use our emotions to decide how we feel and then the logic part of our brain comes up with reasons to justify it. So, you know, what ends up happening in this field over and over and over is the men there, they don't want to believe that they are sexist. Being a sexist is bad, right? So, they come up with reasons to justify it. So, every single time that a woman speaks out on what's going on in tech, we deal with an avalanche of people minimizing our opinions, telling us we're wrong, telling us we're being unfair, coming up with every single excuse in the book. It is absolutely exhausting. And I think something that's really, really, really important to think about is, you know, people think that sexism in the tech industry is two bros chomping on cigars, talking about how women can't code, and that's just not true. The way that sexism ends up happening in the game industry is people have unconscious biases that they're not aware of. The truth is, with PC Magazine, when they put out that many 28 white male speakers, they had an unconscious bias. All the people putting that event together unconsciously did not value women enough to hear what we wanted to say to come network with us over the years. So when they were putting together their show, voila, they come up with 28 white dudes. It's unconscious bias. It really, really hurts our careers. You know, and I think this is really important to remember. What kills women's careers in technology isn't Gamergate. It's unconscious bias. It's things like, you know, this event where we're just excluded. It sends the player a message that women don't belong there, that we're not equals, that this is a space for men. You know, and the saddest thing is this wasn't even a really big day in tech. This is just another Tuesday of being a woman in tech. Something just like it will happen next week and something just like it will happen the week after that. So, why do we keep talking about this? Yeah, you know, the truth is we are winning. We are making changes in the game industry. This year's E3, despite what this magazine did, there was more diversity than I've ever seen in the entire history of the industry. You had more women on stage. You had less sexualized women on stage. You had you know, more games of female protagonists. We are changing the industry because we chose to speak up. We didn't stay silent, and we've introduced consequences into this equation. You know, I do a lot of press about Gamergate and misogyny in the game industry. 
And when Gamergate first started, I used to get a lot of letters, and they just absolutely broke my heart. I would get letters every day from young girls telling me they were too scared to chase their dreams, that they didn't want to get death threats and rape threats. You know, they told me that they were not, they loved games, but they were not going to go into the game industry. And it, it broke my heart. But what I've noticed more and more lately is the young girls that have been writing me, they write me letters that look more like this, that they see women in tech standing up and demanding to be taken seriously and speaking truth to power and not being stopped by the excuses, the erasure, the belittling, or the bullshit. And they are redoubling their efforts, and they are choosing to go into this awesome field, which is honestly the best job on earth. <sighs> so we work in an industry that ships violent, blood-spattered fantasies. This is Gears of War, where, you know, Marcus Phoenix stands up against all odds, overcomes, you know, terrible things, and saves the day. And it's the same formula for Call of Duty, and it's the same formula for Arkham Knight. I could stand up here and give you 20 titles that are exactly like this. But, you know, I've come to realize something lately. You know, this is a typical dev team. Sadly, this is GDC, one of the biggest events in our entire industry. And, you know, the truth is most dev teams in our field are dominated by men and they work in a system that was built by men in a system that serves men. You know, they do a hundred small things that show women we don't belong here. You hold meetings after hours in a bar where, you know, if you're a woman in your early 20s, you may not feel safe. If you're a woman in your 30s, maybe you can't go do that because you have children and you can't stay out all hours of the night. So what I've learned is even though you have these developers that are making these heroes, like Marcus Phoenix and Batman and you know, Call of Duty. But the truth of the matter is, we are the ones that are heroes, the women standing all around them. This is Lara Croft from the 2013 Tomb Raider reboot. You know, this is such a powerful story. So you have, you know, Laura, who was basically, she was a very sexualized character for the first 10 years of her life. So Crystal Dynamics comes out with this massive reboot in 2013. They get Rihanna Pratchett to work with a team of writers to rewrite the character. And they turned what had kind of been a sex symbol into one of the most powerful, self-actualized women in all of video game history. This game really moves me. So you have Lara Croft, who is thrown on an island, and she's young and she doesn't believe in herself yet. And she faces terrible, terrible things. Her best friend Sam is kidnapped. And what Lara does is she reaches inside of herself, and she finds her inner strength. And she doesn't listen to any of the people telling her she doesn't belong there, and that she can't do it. And she goes and she saves her, her best friend. It is such a powerful story. And women that work in tech, we are closer to Lara Croft than the male developers are to being Marcus Phoenix. Oh. Yeah, the truth is, we are surrounded by heroes every single day. You know, when a woman journalist gets death threats for voicing an opinion about Final Fantasy at E3 and doesn't quit her job and turns in one of the best performances of her entire career, that woman is a hero. When a woman works her entire career to become the lone woman journalist at a publication and they assign her all the girl games that aren't considered as prestigious, and she ends up spending all of her time reviewing dance games and fashion games for children, and she grits her teeth, and she pushes through that, and she demands to be taken seriously, that woman is a hero. When a woman developer suggests a solution at a meeting, and people talk over her and write past it, 
and then 10 minutes later, a guy on that team proposes the same thing, and she raises her hand and says, you know what, that was a great idea when I said it, and I need you to recognize that that was my idea. That woman is a hero. When a woman journalist has a child and is laid off from one of the largest publications in our industry, and takes a few years to lick her wounds and figure out where she is, and ends up coming back to the industry in an editorial role, and then finds time to nurture and help the young women on her staff grow into the next generation of professionals, that woman is a hero. When a woman is an introverted engineer and goes to work every single day, with male engineers on staff that belittle her and bully her in ways that she doesn't, they don't understand. And she reaches inside herself, finds that strength, and keeps showing up every single day to do her job. That woman is a hero. When a woman makes a deeply personal game about depression and then is treated like garbage by an entire industry, and then she doesn't quit, she actually stands up to all of that and then goes and forms an organization to help other people that have been bullied by people online. That woman is a hero. When a woman gives an opinion about a game the way any man would and people threaten her and put up posters bullying her at E3 and threaten her with the largest school shooting in history when she speaks, and she doesn't quit, and she keeps going, becoming an icon for women everywhere, that woman is a hero. And when my co-founder, a giant space cat, stood beside me, stood beside her friend through 10 months of Gamergate, and she didn't get any of the fame or press or notoriety that I did, and even though she was scared, she stood right beside me and kept making the thing that she loved that woman was a hero, too. <laughs> you know, the truth is, we are all heroes. Every woman here today is a hero. We are changing the world. And what I want to tell you is if you reach inside yourself and you push past all this nonsense that's telling you to sit down and shut up, I will be standing right there beside you and the women of this field will be standing right beside you and we will keep changing the world. Thank you. <laughs>